good morning so now we will be talking about examination of a urinary case uh, what are the various pointers which will give go, give you an estimation of the diagnosis and what are the various uh, historical and uh, physical examination point which will uh, give you an idea of the diagnosis it may not be possible to describe the entire investigative armamentarium simply because the investigations will vary from case to case and uh, some general investigations will of course be there but then by and large the case uh, the investigation might be case specific so therefore we will look at historical points and we will look at the physical examination now the first thing that we with the moment the patient comes to you and the general history that we always take with reference to their age for example uh, might give you a pointer to the kind of pathology they may be suffering from for example a case of uh, a small child coming to you with a renal mass likely to have a nephroblastoma on the other hand somebody who comes in the third and fourth decade uh, may have a renal cell carcinoma i am giving you two examples and uh, somebody who's also presents in roughly at the same time can also harbor a polycystic kidney disease now this boy here for example is a boy of, of 14 15 years and uh, he can also have an early onset polycystic kidney disease now let's look at the complaints and uh, one of the commonest complaints that we usually talk about uh, with reference to urinary tract is a pain and uh, in order to localize the pain uh, we would uh, uh, sort of go through some factors of anatomy and uh, to localize the characteristics of the pain localize the site of the pain i think to keep in mind some parts of the anatomy is very important here's a young boy who is lying down with almost unclothed excepting for the lowest part and uh, there are various anatomical points that i have marked here <laughs> this is his as if his sternum this is his umbilicus which is marked as l4 and uh, roughly l4 not that it is always at l4 sometimes it can even be up to l5 roughly it is in the region of l4 and l5 <clears throat> and uh, if you take the distance between these two points and bisect it say approximately at this point i have written to put two points here if you draw a line here then that is a transpyloric pain this line is a transpyloric plane this is an important anatomical plane and a lot of things happen here but for the purpose of our discussion today it is a hilum of the kidney we are looking at uh, that is approximately 4 cm away uh, from the midline this is this is the hilus of the kidney so therefore the point that i am wishing to make to you is the location of the kidney and uh, uh, the uh, is the palpation of the kidney and the ability to palpate will obviously depend upon where it lies and you can very well see that a large amount of it lies well above the costal margin in other words under the rib cage the place where it is located will depend slightly different from the right and left side because the mass of the liver is sitting here that pushes the right kidney slightly down on the other hand the left kidney is slightly higher up so we have to take that into account uh, when we are examining the kidney now if supposing if you roughly draw a shape of the kidney and let us assume that this is l4 and somewhere around here lower border of l3 would be somewhere around here it's not precise it's somewhere around here and uh, so therefore uh, if you draw a line keeping this to be the hilum just let us draw a rough kidney there say this is the hilum and if you draw it like this somewhat like this let's draw it if you draw it like this then you can see this is the lowest part of the costal costal margin so you are unlike you are likely to feel only the lower pole of the kidney majority of the kidney is going to lie above this particular line so this has to be kept in mind so now if we look at the back of the patient so now this is the kidney that i have drawn from behind there are surface markings here also this is his t12 l1 2 3 normally the kidney extends from uh, l1 to l3 lower border of l3 and this is called what is called a morris parallelogram now this is the hilus of the i have tritely exaggerated the points in order to make it clear to you 
This is his twelfth uh, rib, and this somewhere here would be the hilus of the kidney. Should be the hilus of the kidney. <clears throat> That's about three point five to. Uh, centimeters away from the midline, and this is about 8.5 centimeters. Five centimeters being the width of the kidney. So, if you draw roughly a kidney shape in this region, that is where the kidney is going to look. This is 12th, and just below this, see this hollow kind of space. This is the renal angle. This is the 12th rib. This is the renal angle. Just below the 12th rib, and this is the margin of erector spinae. what you are seeing here this is the erector spinae so just in this area this is the renal angle so if you have pain which is arising from the kidney or if you have fullness if you have a swelling in the kidney this angle is likely to be full right now it is the boy hasn't have any pathology so this angle is nice and hollow but when it is enlarged the kidney is enlarged this angle is going to be full i am mentioning this along with the pain because i am not going to come back to this area later on and therefore i am sharing those points also with you so this is the renal angle and this is the hollow which is uh, uh, which which will get filled up if there is a swelling of the kidney and if you punch it in this area the so called murphy's punch then you will also elicit some tenderness right so please remember this area this hollow here and this is where the kidney swellings will show up this is the morris parallelogram roughly the location of the kidney is l1 2 3 lower border 